Well, welcome everybody. I'm Gillian English. I'm the Executive Director of the Dan Mass School Tennis Trust. And I'm absolutely delighted that one of our Vice Presidents, former number one and a leading tennis commentator, Sam Smith, is going to interview a couple of our young players just to find out from them what it's like to play wheelchair tennis and how important it is to them. Um, and we have Abby Breakwell joining us first. Hi, Abby. And Hello. Sam, I'll hand over to you to, to do the business end. Jilly, thanks very much. And we'll let you get the dogs all sorted out as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm uh, delighted to be here today. And Abby, great, great, great to talk to you. Um, whereabouts, whereabouts are you coming from today? Where's home? Nottingham. So not too far from my main training area, which is Loughborough. <laughs> Good part. Well, I must say, uh, you have a fantastic surname for tennis. <laughs> Break well. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a lot of the, I used to have it taken the mick out of at school because I always, I, I was so clumsy, I used to break everything. <laughs> so it never worked well at school either. <laughs> In tennis, it, you've got, you've got a, a really well. good name there. Um, I'd love to know just briefly before we sort of get into the main bones of, of the interview, since sort of March and lockdown, how have you managed and how has it been with your, with your training? Um, it's mostly the LTA have really been really supportive and so have Dan Maskell where they've um, given me a programme so I can still do gym work and um, I've managed to get hold of a rebound wall so I can still practice tennis. But Is that a really rebo, cool. the rebo wall? Yeah, the rebound wall. So it means I can still practice my techniques and shots even though I'm not on court. Is that the same one that Andy Murray had in his driveway? Uh, no, I think it's a slightly different one. Okay. Well, I will admit I did hit it over the fence quite a few times okay. and missed it, just well, like it's you Andy, did. So it's fine. Yeah, but um, so it was, it was great fun. It meant that I could still carry on with tennis. The only thing was that I couldn't see my friends as often. So my, um, my coach has set up a um, PT session so we'd all do gym work together on every Tuesday with all of my friends. So we could see each other online and we could still do all the gym work together, which was really lovely. Great. No, it sounds like you, you sounds like you've coped uh, admirably. And um, I've been watching a few clips of you online. Uh, you have a vicious forehand, but obviously you didn't you didn't begin with a vicious forehand. So I'd love to know. I mean, you started quite late in terms of the tennis. At, I believe you were thirteen. Um, but how did you get started? Um, the British Open, which is in Nottingham, uh, they have ball crew members are from the local schools. And every year they pick a school and a year group to train as ball crew and then go to the competition. Um, I was very lucky. Um, one The year that I was um, in year eight, I was picked to go do the ball crew. And so I ball crewed for the pros. And then the England manager, who was head of, Tony Napper, who was head of the team, asked, uh, would you like to come and have a go? And I was like, I can't catch a ball. How can I play tennis if I can't even catch a ball? But he was like, it's fine, you'll be fine, just have a go. And that's where I got in a chair and I've never stopped since. And was it pretty instantaneous? I mean, I know you've played some basketball and you're a very sporty young woman, but did, it, did you connect instantly with the sport? I really loved the sport. I mean, the first time I walked into the, state, uh, the um, grounds of Nottingham, I said, I feel at home. I, I'm with people that have disabilities as well. I've never felt like this before. And I said to mum, I know you've always told me I'm the same as everyone else, but I'm not. And it's okay because there are others like me. And I think from that point of view, I've connected ever since, even though I've not quite enjoyed the blister so much with your hands. I, mu I must say, I know you say disability, but I've got to say, I've watched you, I've, I haven't seen you play live, but I've watched a lot of wheelchair tennis. I only, personally, I only see ability. So, uh, you know, it's fantastic that you're, you're in the sport. Um, obviously, you know, wheelchair tennis is still evolving. Who, who is there anyone that you particularly look up to and has inspired you? Because I know you love the sport, but there's always, you know, like any sports person, there's ups and downs and there's good days and bad days. I think I think several people have really been help who have really helped me. So um, with the position that we're in, we get to train with some of the pros sometimes. And Jordan Wiley and Louise Hunt have really helped me. And Lauren Jones has also helped me by um, allowing me to play doubles with her. And uh, Lucy Shuka also has really helped by giving me advice when on and off court, both about tennis and not about tennis. 
And I think that's one of the great things about tennis is your whole life and the conversations you have with each other and relationship doesn't just evolve around tennis, it's outside of tennis too. You, you come across as, a, as a very confident and self-assured. I'd love to know, did you go up to Lucy and Jordan and chat to them or did they come over to you? How did that, how did that happen? Because I must say in the professional ranks, you know, a lot of junior players wouldn't go up to Joe Conta or Joe probably wouldn't know of, of their awareness. So it's interesting for me that that dynamic might be slightly different in the wheelchair game. Yeah, I, the dynamics is so different where we will sit and have a conversation. Even when I was ball crew, I was sitting and uh, David Wagner came up to us and said, kids, who wants an ice cream? And he was one of the top, he's one of the top quads. It, it was so different to what I've ever experienced before. I mean, when growing up, I, I was conf not very confident. And tennis has definitely helped with that, trying to keep the confidence building. And I think the players have helped with that as well. Oh, that, that is so good to hear. Dan, Dan Maskell was uh, probably someone your parents and grandparents would have uh, listened to with his wonderful commentary voice and he would have been part of their tennis experience. But obviously he was around a long time before you were, you were even born. But he set up this, this you know, wonderful foundation. How, how does the Dan Maskell Tennis Trust just make a difference and help you with your training and your career? Um, they've helped fund my individual sessions. So when I first started out, I was only doing group sessions with my friends. And that was it was absolutely brilliant but for, to be able to allow me to improve and show me how much I could improve and how much I could achieve. I needed to have the, be able, I needed to be able to have the individual sessions and the money that Dan Maskell gave me able, enabled me to be able to have them sessions. Just give me an idea. What's the sort of rough cost of a, an individual session? Uh, it with court time and coaching, it's around about fifty pounds. Yeah, that's 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 a, that's, that's an awful lot. And and what what is it? What is the extra from you get from those individual sessions? How does that? How can you see the improvement in your game? It means that you can have that one to one with a coach. So you have um you build more of a better relationship with your coach, and it also it allows you to um understand the game more from a personal perspective, as well, and. And it also helps you to focus on your goals more as well. So when um, playing with others, you help each other along and you, you're not always focused on what you want to do. But by having them individuals, it allows you to focus on the things that you need to do to improve. You've explained that extremely well. And I think you're taking full advantage of those lessons. Now, Abby, am I right? You're 17 at the moment? Yes. So are you first, were you first year of A-levels or were you about to take them? Um, I was doing a sports uh, diploma at Loughborough College. So it was a two year course and yep. it's, it, it's equivalent to three A levels. Okay. So it, it, it's been really good. Loughborough College has been very supportive as well. During lockdown, they've um, helped with Zoom calls through lessons, even if we're stuck, the teachers would be ringing us up asking if we needed help. So it's been very good as well. And I've made a lot of new friends at college and everything, which is really good. So do you finish that next year? Is there another year to go? Yeah, I finish that next year. So it's um, you do anatomy and coaching yep. sort of thing. So it's all mixed in, which no, is great. Right. Excuse, my, excuse my ignorance of anything other than A-levels. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> um, but, you're, you know, you've got your studies. I know you play basketball. I did read somewhere that you are, you're a youth leader for your local scouts. I don't know if you have time to do that <laughs> anymore. Uh, you've got your tennis. You're an, you know, you're an international, you're a Great Britain team member. How do you juggle all this? Because I think a lot of people will be interested, especially other young players and athletes. How on earth do you do it all? Um, I also do wheelchair racing as oh, well. Do you? <laughs> just yeah. to, it's just a lot. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's mostly timekeeping, but great advice that I'd always had from my coach is never just do one sport. Even if you want to play professional in one sport, do with the sports because like in tennis it's quite a individual sport and can be quite isolating so by doing basketball you make that you um, create that team environment and you learn from different things that you can put into your game by from different sports as well and um, I think my parents have helped a lot with that as well my parents have oh, I'm glad, I, I've got a feeling mum or dad is, is slightly off camera but it's, it's very good that you mentioned that <laughs> they're very good taxis <laughs> 
at my age especially where um traveling a lot I mean last year during the six weeks we went away for seven weeks and we're at home for 10 days and mum and dad were constantly traveling with me mm-hmm. and it it's really nice I've got to say it's nice to have them parents support next to you because I've been away before with coaches and that and they've not always been there yeah. and it, it, it's been re- it's it's different but it's really nice when they're there and supporting that's one of the reasons why I like Nottingham actually is it's my hometown and my friends that I ball crew with when I play come and support me and they'll sit on the bench I remember one year I was sitting on the bench and the whole stand was full of ball crew and my family members and my friends that sounds that 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 sounds fantastic you seem to have a really good team and environment Abby so that's uh, that's so good and you've got a big tick with the parents getting that in (laughs) as well (laughs) Now, as you'll be very aware, not, it's not just the Dan Maskell Tennis Trust, but many charities have, have obviously had a massive drop in funding with, with lockdown. And it's been a very difficult time. I know that uh, Gilly's annual golf day, which I've never actually made an appearance at, which is probably a good thing, actually, because my golf is appalling. You know, that is a big fundraiser. That happens in May. That had to be cancelled. So what instead the Trust has done has set up a, a Just Giving page. Uh, under the, the specific title of Dan Maskell, two L's, very important, 20. And if anyone was thinking of giving to the trust, what what sort of organisation are they giving to and how much of a difference is it making to so many wheelchair athletes? It's been, it's helped a lot of wheelchair athletes. I mean, even for me from such a young age, it's not just funding, they help with coaching, it's also wheelchairs. They help um, fund to be able to get people in wheelchairs to play the sport because it is very hard to play wheelchair tennis without a wheelchair. <laughs> Can you just explain a little bit more also about the sort of, the, these are very specific tennis wheelchairs and they don't, they're, they're, not, they're not a cheap item, are they? No, a lot of tennis chairs can be in their thousands, right. which is very expensive for anyone, especially somebody who's just starting out in the sport. Um, a lot of the chairs were adapted especially for the sport, so they have a longer back caster, so you don't tip out the chair, and they have a wider camber. So their wheels are more angled like that instead of straight to allow you to turn quicker. So you, you could play in a day chair, but it, it just wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't work as well. And by Dan Maskell given, helping with this funding, it allows everybody to be able to join in a sport together. And it allows you to make friends and it allows you to be able to get more fit, which will mentally and physically help you. I, I can see why they made you an ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> um, Going going forward, uh, where where are your aspirations? How do you see? I know some of the ten ev- events are coming back. I'm not quite sure what's happening in the in the in the in the wheelchair tennis world. But where do you see your career progressing in the next few years? I'm hoping to go to Wimbledon in the, in a couple of years' time. I'm hoping to. It's going to be a bit of a push, but I'm hoping to get there. Um, I would like to go to the Paralympics, but at the minute it's a bit slow starting because obviously we've got to be very cautious with social distancing and everything. So competitions at the minute for um, for my age group aren't happening yet, yeah. even though the wheelchair section is happening a bit more with the adults. And um, it's mostly at the minute focusing on training and improving the skills, especially at my age. I'm so young into the sport. I've got more years ahead of me to get gather more experience. and also. Um, Hopefully next year, I'd like to go to the TARBS, which is the Math Juniors Masters. So it, that would be a lovely to go to because it would be my last year because my age as well. Well, TARBS is a, is a fantastic spot in the south of France. And actually, it's, a, it's also a very, fa- I don't know if you realise this, it's a very famous uh, name in tennis because there's also a, another very famous junior tournament for football, able-bodied 14-year-olds. So uh, if you could get your, and everyone at 14 wants to get to TARBS. So I, I really hope you get there. Abby, it's been wonderful talking to you. Uh, I will be looking forward to watching at Wimbledon in a few years' time. And I think we're going to have to get you in the commentary box at some point. <laughs> You've got, you're a fantastic talker. Thank you. So thanks so much for Thank today. You. And we just look forward to, um, I can't wait to see how you progress. You're a terrific young woman. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. Thank you very much. Thank Brilliant. You. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks. Bye.